Sentry mode activated. Target acquired. Hey there hunters and welcome back to the Gunners Guild. Today we're going to talk about a specific armor skill which you might have guessed is Coalescence. I'm not sure why more people aren't running this skill or talking about it, but it's a really good skill. So that's what we're going to go over today, so let's get into it. First off, Coalescence is a new skill in Iceborne that grants you a buff after clearing a Blight. It can be any status really except like Stun or Bleed. Fire Blight, Water Blight, Thunder Blight, Blast Blight, Poison I believe works. All that stuff, you name it. The buff will grant you an X amount of raw, element, and status for a whopping 90 seconds once you clear it. It's a crazy amount of time. Like, 90 seconds is ridiculous. And it starts after you clear your blight, so not once you get blighted. So you don't have to worry about it, you know, procking once you get blight and then having to clear it and waste some of your time. Now at rank 1, it's 12 raw, 30 element, and 5% status. Rank 2 is 15 raw. 60 element, 10% status, and rank 3 is 18 raw, 90 element, and 15% status. To put it in relative terms, rank 1 is basically like getting attack 4, element 1, status 1, and then rank 2 is attack 5, element 2, status 2, and rank 3 is attack 6, element 3, status 3. It's a lot of extra stats. Now the skill comes innately on some Vel'Kana and Shara Ashvalda pieces, so if you're running Frostcraft you might be able to get away with it on that, but ultimately I recommend just kind of gemming it in. The decoration is a level 3, or you can use the level 4 one to also have something like Evade Window or Health Boost or Divine Protection as well. The other thing about Coalescence is that I highly recommend only getting rank 1. The thing about it is that level 3 is 3 level 3 or 4 decorations. It's a huge amount of investment, and the skill doesn't really scale all that well. The element and status is linear, but the raw is not. I'm sure there are some sets that can run Frostcraft and squeeze out rank 3 if you're using elemental setups, which doesn't really make sense in my books, but you can. And also things like Bow can also make use of it because it wants both the raw and the element. But otherwise, I don't really think the investment is worth it, but using rank 1 gets you the most bang for your buck. It's like having an attack 4 and an element 1 on just one level 3 slot, which is pretty outstanding. Now Coalescence is also pretty easy to activate as well. Almost every monster can blight you in some way, like the Wrath family leaves patches of fire on the ground from their fireballs and you can just touch it and roll it off. Teostra Blast Clouds often blight players and they can just roll that off. Legiana and Volcana can frost blight you if you touch their ice patches. Now, I don't recommend doing this if you're bow or dual blades because the stamina loss is not worth it. Same goes for Namiel and Water Blight, hard pass on that one. Devil Joe can just Dragon Blight you very easily if you Clutch Claw him or you touch his clouds. And I don't recommend getting Thunder Blighted either. You can also activate it by touching Poison Spore Cups and Bomb Toads on the map to just self-inflict your status and clear them yourself. Anyway, once you get your status, you can easily just eat your Null Bear or your Antidote and just be away with it. And it basically turns those items into a better Might Seed. Or in cases like Blast and Fire, you can just, you know, roll and keep the fight going. There's like no downtime there. And on both sets and other things where you're running True Critical Element and running the Silver Rathalos gear, you already have high fire rest, so rolling off the fire blight takes like two rolls tops. It's very easy to proc this skill, and because it lasts 90 seconds, you don't really have a whole lot of downtime. Now the downside though is that you do kind of have to go out of your way to set it up. However, Coalescence is mad efficient from mixing sets in that both use raw and element, kind of like dual blades, bow, savage axe, glaive, sword and shield, stuff like that. I'm not sure how much free space melee sets tend to have, but things like Bowgun and Bow can pretty easily get rid of one slot. For Bow, I typically swap out a normal up decoration. It drops my rapid damage by about maybe 2 per arrow, but once Coalescence is activated, my arrows go up to about 4. At least when I test it on Teo's head. So as long as I could keep it up, it was pretty much worth the trade. Now I know 2 more damage per arrow doesn't sound like a lot, but when rapids are hitting 3 times per and spreads are hitting 6 times, that's 6 to 12 more damage a hit, which kind of adds up over time. Plus, more damage is more damage. For bow guns, I'd only really recommend using it on elemental setups that can benefit from both the raw and the element side of the damage. Otherwise, things like normal spread and pierce bow guns would probably do better off just getting their level 2 of their MO ups. But keep the skill in mind at least when you're making your sets, it's just one level 3 decoration. Also, don't forget about your mantle slots. There are a lot of mantles that have space to fit in coalescence decorations if you want to cram out some more damage with those. You can catch a blight even unexpectedly and throw on a mantle with coalescence and then clear the blight to activate it. 
Something like Apothecary Mantle or Impact Mantle have a level 3 slot on them, Vitality and Glider Mantles have 4, and Immunity Mantle has a level 3 as well, which you will instantly clear the Blight and activate Coalescence at the same time if you put it on. This is very handy for things like Valhazak where you can catch your Effuvium and then pop on an Immunity Mantle to clear it and then automatically proc your Coalescence. Your mantle decorations are great for niche uses just like this and they work really well with Coalescence, so don't overlook those. Now if I were to say which monsters I would absolutely always run Coalescence on, it would pretty much only be the Wraths and Teostra and maybe Brachydeos. There's typically enough fire and blast patches around that you could probably touch it regardless and keeping the skill up shouldn't be that much of a problem, but anyone should be able to take advantage of it if they try it hard enough, plus keeping null berries on you is probably a good idea anyway. Anyway, I just wanted to bring this skill to your attention. We don't get very many new skills and this one's actually got some good uses. I hope we get a Gamma version of the Shara set with better skills later down the road because this could become outright mandatory if it had some great armor pieces that defaulted with it. And I'm not saying you should always run this skill, but please keep it in mind and know about the blights and what you can benefit from with each monster. So thank you all for watching and good luck out there hunters and whatever you may be hunting.